What's up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point podcast coming to you from, of course, fanboysanonymous.com. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango, and my target to review for this edition is going to be the latest in the DC not extended universe, because they don't actually call it that apparently, but the DC films that are connected, at least for now, until they stop being connected. It's all a confusing mess, but hey, it's Justice League. We're finally there. We finally get the uh, team-up movie after four films. Uh, <laughs> it's not quite the same feeling as when we got the Avengers, is it? But if you are unfamiliar with how the Review Point podcast works, it's pretty simple. I try to do my best to break down my thoughts on the movie and as far as the things that I liked and I disliked, the hits and the misses are what I call them throughout this uh, review because that goes with the gimmick and everything like that. And I just mostly talk about as many things as I can think of that I can remember from the movie. I'm missing a lot of things usually when it comes to, like, specifics of, like, different scenes and such. But that's something that just, you know, I'm trying to do this right after I've seen the movie and all that. I have seen the movie about an hour ago. This is the time frame of, you know, where I can kind of, like, sit in my brain. And I'm sure some things over time will get better. Some things will get worse. Hopefully not too many things. And, uh... Before we get started, I will warn you guys that uh, there will be spoilers on this review. So, before we get to the spoilers, let me do a quick non-spoiler review. As far as the movie goes, I was disappointed. Uh, I went into this movie with a kind of battle of expectations. Part of me really, really, really thought they could have turned things around and this could have ended up being really good. The other part of me thought, yeah, but what's the likelihood of that? They probably aren't going to actually make this on par with what The Avengers was. And it's kind of a shame to look at a movie and then compare it to another movie and another studio and another set of writers and such. But we did have Joss Whedon. And even though he wasn't controlling this movie the way that he was controlling the Avengers, there are means where we can have some connectivity here. We can compare the two things and we can say, look, you didn't learn the lessons from Marvel and apply them to your own thing, like what movies should be doing. Or you took these great things and you made them better. You know, some different things here and there. Uh, the non-spoiler version of this review, it's not as good. And it's good enough for a movie to see it's not good enough for a franchise building tentpole amazing epic movie it just isn't i used my movie pass for this and this was the first thing that i ever used a movie pass for and you know what i am happy that i saved the extra five bucks it's a little disappointing to say that because the movie the ticket it was like 14 42 or something like that to see it at the time that i was seeing it and everything and, uh, you know, it's 10 bucks a month when it comes to movie pass. So really, I mean, it's a, technically I didn't spend $14 or $10. I only spent the $9 for the whole uh, movie pass thing. And we're getting down that whole big rabbit hole and stuff like that. And if I see any more movies, then that'll dwindle how much money I spent on this. And that'll make me feel better actually, because if I see another couple of movies and it ends up being that I spent like $2 to see this instead, I'll be a little bit happier. Uh, I was disappointed with this movie and there are parts of it that I liked and there were parts of it that I liked a lot. And I'm actually looking at this list, uh, the hits and the misses and the kind of things that are in the middle. I have more hits than I have anything else, but there are big structural problems with this movie. And I'm going to dig into a lot of that stuff on the spoilers and differentiate between the hits and the misses. But as far as the non-spoiler version of this, if you have to go with a see it or a skip it, I'll say see it, but if you missed it on this whole opening night thing, meh, you know, <laughs> not the biggest uh, deal in the world. So now is where the warning comes up. Spoilers for the rest of this whole review. If you have not seen the movie yet and you don't want to know what happens, bookmark this, watch the movie, come back and check it out later. Or if you're the type of person who doesn't care about spoilers, then, you know, this doesn't apply to you. Or if you're somebody who wants to know spoilers and this is the thing that's going to make you decide whether or not to see the movie, at least you know there will be spoilers. So, first things first. Batman. Hit. 
Batman is my favorite superhero of all time, always has been, always will be. I highly doubt that'll ever change. And when you put Batman in a movie, the biggest thing that I'm going to be concerned about is, did you screw up Batman? And no, they didn't screw up Batman. He doesn't kill anybody in this, which is good. He kills parademons, but you know what? Batman's always been okay with killing monsters and such, so I'm, I'm cool with that. He used his gadgets all over the place on this. Great. He was the type of person who would want to self-sacrifice. Awesome. We've seen Batman do that all the time. Uh, Justice League, the animated series, multiple times on that one. I mean, there was the whole thing with the Watchtower. Great scene. Uh, and the whole thing with him uh, doing the magnetic pulse of the Batwing and taking the whole uh, missile away. And he, you know, quote unquote, takes a bullet for Superman. Batman's the type of person that does that. They pull that off really well in here. Batman's also a loner, and he doesn't get along well with people, and he's an asshole, and they got that too. I mean, Cyborg even says, while you were being an asshole. So I really liked the way that they did that. I liked the suit. I liked uh, everything about Batman. I like my Ben Affleck Batman. I don't think that he is such a good Batman that nobody else can ever replace him. And there are rumors going around right now that Jake Gyllenhaal might be the next Batman, and that's a possibility that maybe he could even be better. But I do like Ben Affleck as Batman, and I don't want to see him leave unless he doesn't want to do it. And if he doesn't want to do it, and we end up getting like a Jennifer Lawrence mystique situation where you can tell that they're phoning it in, then I would rather him leave. Unless our you know replacement is even worse, but I don't think that's necessarily going to be the case. I like it though the way that we are i am fine if we stay with this exact batman and we just kind of build more into the world and we kind of get him going a little bit better and such hit that's a hit gal gadot rock solid as wonder woman uh she is just uh, i mean i don't want to say like necessarily perfect but she does the job exactly the way that she should be doing the job. I mean, she is Wonder Woman. I don't question at all anymore the idea that she is Wonder Woman on the screen. She pulls it off. She gets the grace behind it. She gets the warrior attitude. Big fan of her pulling off this character. Uh, one miss when it comes to Wonder Woman, though. Why was her introduction pretty much only focusing on her speed? I mean, this was like her speed alone. I mean, this part in this movie uh, that introduces her, which you've seen in some of the trailers where she's fighting people in what looks like a bank, and it is a bank. She is just going through and blocking bullets left and right, and everything's in slow motion. And it makes me wonder, shouldn't that be more suited for The Flash? It felt so strange, and I really don't understand why they would have... I, don't, I mean, you have to have a scene introducing her. You had your scene introducing Batman, which, oddly enough, this actor, I had to look up his name, Holt McCallany, McAlaney, uh, I'm assuming McCallany, just a random thug at the beginning, it felt really weird, that's one of my misses, it, uh, that guy's been in a bunch of different things, Fight Club and such, and to bring him in there and he's just some guy, I mean, I kind of wanted him to maybe be one of those like D-list Batman villains or something, that would have been kind of cool, kind of like what we did with uh, KG Beast in uh, Batman v Superman. But whatever, that's another side thing. That's a miss uh, on its own. But Batman has his introduction. He's being Batman. He tries to take down the Parademon. The Parademon explodes. That's cool. That reminds me a little bit of the Justice League Doom. And that was a nice little nod and such. Wonder Woman's, though, shouldn't you have been focusing more of on her power or her grace or... I don't know anything other than her speed like this. It was all about her speed, which was really strange. I just don't understand that at all. Anyway, Gal Gadot is Wonder Woman. She's a major hit. That's for sure. You could say I would hit that. And there's your sexist joke of the night, which, by the way, uh, something that is a hit when it comes to I'll have to admit I'm a guy. So it's a hit. But it was oddly uh, something that was like almost a little bit unsettling was how they had maybe like four or five shots in the movie that felt like they were like the camera was on the ground specifically to get an ass shot for her, uh, for Gal Gadot. And I don't know. I don't know if I was planned or not, or if it's just through my mindset, I'm filtering that out, but I wasn't the only one that noticed it too, about a bunch of, I know I bought a ticket for nine of my uh, friends or 10 of my friends. 
and the 11 of us, we all said, oh yeah, we totally noticed that. So it wasn't just me. So don't blame me on that one. Uh, one, one of my friends pointed out the idea that Wonder Woman goes through this whole movie pointing about the whole like feminist icon type of thing. And then the next one, she's multiple times referred to as like, kind of like a sex symbol sort of thing. And that didn't seem a little bit too weird for me, but, uh, you know, something else to just pay attention to. Oddly enough, Cyborg was a hit. And that is a huge surprise to me because I have never liked the Cyborg character for anything other than a member of the Teen Titans. To me, Cyborg is a character, this is going to sound controversial, but I I think it's just the truth of the matter. Cyborg is not a main Justice League character, and I feel like they've been boosting him over the past bunch of years because he happens to be a black superhero. And I have no problem with the fact of, like, if they would have said, like, okay, well, you need to go with Jon Stewart and put Green Lantern in the movie. I think Hal Jordan works better, but you know what? There's a little bit of a justification behind a Jon Stewart. Cool. Why not? I think that diversifying different movie roles is great. Uh, I have no problem with, like, the whole idea of Aquaman being this Polynesian guy because Aquaman, another major hit. But Cyborg is not the type of character that I ever thought was really all that necessary. And for him to be boosted up into the main Justice League a bunch of years ago, it felt like it was a PR move. In this movie, he feels like he belongs. And they did it much better than I've seen them do in almost any other incarnation of that. So I like that a lot. I uh, was really shocked about that. Cyborg, in all actual aspects except for CGI in every way I liked the cyborg character he was kind of funny enough but not too funny not to be like goofy funny he served his part of the plot very uh, very well I, I don't know I was just I, I liked cyborg so awesome job to be able to turn me around a little bit when it comes to that and the same thing for Aquaman I've never liked Aquaman at all Aquaman is dumb it's a stupid character in a lot of ways he's a gimmick it's the idea of what if it was like a fish person? How about that? That's a superpower kind of thing. And he just happened to be at the right time, at the right place in the DC catalog where he ended up being one of the main kind of uh, characters. It's been decades since anybody gave a shit about ba- uh, Aquaman. Yet, you know what? This is the coolest Aquaman we've ever gotten. So Aquaman's a hit. Funny enough, without being goofy, again, somebody who's badass enough. And I'm actually kind of interested to see this Aquaman movie. However, miss when it comes to the Atlantean stuff. It all just blended together. I don't quite get it. Uh, The structures inside the whole Atlantean, uh, I I guess like fortress it was technically, it just sort of felt like the, I don't really want to say it doesn't sound too mean, but like, the baseline standard of like, they were like, I don't know, make it like, look like kind of uh, Roman or some shit and just get it over with. Like they didn't have a lo- whole lot of finesse to it. They didn't have a whole lot of pop. And I hope that they don't use that air bubble to speak throughout the whole Aquaman film because that was pretty weird. I like uh, Amber Heard. She was a nice choice for Mera. No surprises there. She was fine. I want more out of the Atlanteans though. Aquaman, at least, you sold me on Aquaman. I'm cool with Aquaman now. Sell me on the Atlanteans. The Amazons took a step up. A uh, bunch of badass women fighting Steppenwolf. That was cool. So, Themyscira, another hit. Uh, the Flash, for the most part, really good. I actually really like the casting of Billy Crudup for Henry Allen as well. That was nice. And I like that Barry was the comedic relief, because he should be. Uh, Barry is not Wally, but over the years they've pretty much tried to make Barry Wally because you need the Flash in that kind of capacity to have some personality. And admittedly, Barry Allen doesn't have that much personality in the comics. He's just a pretty bland superhero, and for him to be a little bumbling, that works better because he is one of those kind of characters that if you write him as as smart as he should be and as powerful as he should be. Nobody should ever stand a chance against a Flash. But if he's kind of a bumbling guy, then somebody can. He can trip over his feet. And I like that. I like uh, 
Ezra Miller as uh, Barry Allen in that kind of capacity. A little bit disappointed that we didn't get to see Iris West, but I can understand there wasn't really too much of a spot for her. So I'll get back to things that we've cut out a little bit later. Another hit for me is Lois Lane. She played exactly the right part that she should, no more, no less. She shouldn't have been a main focal point, but she was the thing that could bring Clark back, and that's exactly what Lois's role should be in the movie. She did a little bit of structure here and there for a couple other scenes, but she wasn't supposed to be the one fighting Steppenwolf. And if anybody complains about it and saying, like, well, she should have helped out with the plot or something like that, she did. She helped get Superman back. And even though she didn't, you know, do the whole uh, actual resurrection thing, she was the emotional core that grounded him back into reality. Exactly how I would have written Lois Lane into this movie. So, awesome. Big hit when it comes to that. Jeremy Irons is Alfred. Really good again. No surprises there. Also, nice quip about, uh, it was like people going on a date or whatever it was. It, it escapes me now off the top of my head. Uh, J.K. Simmons is Commissioner Gordon. I'm digging that too. I love the idea of Deathstroke at the end, even though Lex Luthor is still lame. And I really was hoping that they would have done something where they would have recasted him or something. But okay, I guess we're sticking with uh, Jesse Eisenberg. Also, and another really, really good thing, Green Lantern. But the uh, the note that I wrote down earlier, uh, which was you know, about less than an hour ago, where I was just sort of like, all right, let me write down all my notes ahead of time, is, yo, Green Lantern. Oh no Green Lantern. I really am happy that they put a Green Lantern in the original fight with Steppenwolf. That was a necessary thing. You needed at least some kind of Green Lantern reference. I am disappointed that we didn't get a Green Lantern though. And I'm disappointed that we didn't get at least some kind of a call to the idea of like maybe Hal Jordan was elsewhere or, you know, something like that. I I don't know. Maybe in a deleted scene, at the very least, they put a Green Lantern in the movie, so I like that. But now we got to start talking about some of the things that I didn't like. I'm on the fence as far as Superman. I love how they brought him back, uh, bringing him back to life through the uh, amniotic chamber as opposed to not having the whole birthing matrix thing. Like That was a really nice touch. I really liked that. And I really liked how Lois called uh, called Martha... And they had that nice little moment. But what was weird was I felt like there were lines that were cut from that scene and the conversation just jumped around a lot. But that, again, again, that was like the entire movie. Everything felt like it was like kind of just jumping around and no like seams to hold it together and stuff. But Superman in this movie felt strange to me. Like they needed to do this with the movie where he was taken out of the equation for the majority of it. Because you can't have Superman be that powerful and not just beat the shit out of Steppenwolf. However, when they brought him back, I mean, it it felt like if you if you're playing sports, right? It doesn't matter what type of sport it is, but let's just go with football. And you win a game, but you win it knowing that you could have done better. That's how I feel with the majority of this movie, and Superman is one of the main reasons why. Uh, it, I, not the, one of the, not one of the main reasons why, as far as he was like some character that really took everything apart and everything like that. No, more so the way that they handled Superman didn't feel up to par, and that is indicative of the entire movie. If you are playing football and you do win, you're expecting to win with touchdowns, but you can theoretically win with safeties and you can win with just field goals. And wouldn't it feel weird if you won the Super Bowl just because you did 20 field goals in a row and the other team didn't do anything? That's how I kind of feel with this movie. And that's how I feel with Justice League's handling of Superman, where they pulled off what they pulled off. And it is a good representation of Superman, but it's not a great one. And it should have been a great one. And it could have been a great one, but it wasn't. And that's what's really disappointing about that. They have the material to pull that off. They've spent more time building up Superman than any other character in this movie. Yet, he felt lacking. For instance, the return of having him fight with everybody 
there were some scenes in that that were really cool. Some real quick shots, you know. He should be the most powerful. He is the most powerful. He's fucking Superman. Superman is basically the top of everything. So it was good to see him just, you know, headbutt uh, Wonder Woman and for him to take down the Flash because he's as fast as the Flash and to just backhand Aquaman, just kind of like, fuck you, you're Aquaman, I don't give a shit. And for him to have some kind of a little bit of anger towards Batman because there is that tension. They're supposed to respect each other and really, really like each other. And I like that line too, where he's like, I don't not like you, like that kind of thing. But I don't know. I I felt it was missing a little bit of, it said it should have been a little bit more grandiose. I don't know. Uh, No fucking dark side in this movie. That's a major miss. No shot at all of dark side. Not one shot. Not like a looming shadow from the mother box boom tube. Nothing like that, really. And the way that they handled the the mother boxes felt a lot more like the Infinity Gauntlet. Because I, maybe I'm wrong. And if I am wrong, leave a comment below and tell me. I don't remember the mother boxes ever forming a unity together and there only being three of them. I remember them being a bunch and they all were powerful. So... I don't know if I really, really like that necessarily. I understand kind of why they did that for the plot because it's a lot easier. But at the same time, meh, felt a little derivative. Steppenwolf himself too sucked. Uh, You can criticize the Marvel movies for having shitty villains and it's totally true. Most Marvel movies, the villains are pretty lackluster and it looked like they kind of copied the same mentality when it came to Marvel because this movie, uh, the villain is a CGI fight machine and that's it. Kieran Hines brings no life to the role. It's just the bad guy and he just looks like the bad guy. So that's it. Like tell me about Steppenwolf. Give me something to to bite into, you know, by the end of this movie, nobody's going to know who the hell Steppenwolf is. The people that don't know DC ahead of time, like I knew Steppenwolf at least a little bit through the Justice League cartoon and through some comics here and there. I am not going to be able to say like, oh, well, in this issue, Steppenwolf is whatever. I don't know uh, the comics that much, but I do know at least a little bit of Steppenwolf. I've done a little bit of my research and such. And sure, he's Steppenwolf. Like, he is uh, a military general guy who works underneath Darkseid, but that's it. And the character doesn't have too much to go on other than that but just because the source material doesn't have that too much to go on doesn't mean that they can't fill it in and he's just bland so I would have rather had a different villain Uh, I think that maybe it would have been a better idea to go with Brainiac first and to do something with the last sign of Krypton instead of doing the mother boxes maybe the mother boxes could have been a part of that maybe the mother boxes are built through the same type of technology that Brainiac is in. I don't know. I, I probably would have gone that route. Uh, if they don't go with Brainiac in the future, and I mean the brain interactive construct, not the green alien dude. That, that's fucking dumb. Uh, yeah, that was just disappointing though. Steppenwolf, not all that great. I would have rather had just Darkseid too. That would have been even better. Then you would have needed a Green Lantern and then you would have needed, uh, you know, it's a whole other thing like that. But Steppenwolf, that's your big gun. Meh, didn't work. The music for this, uh, the Batman theme felt like it was hidden. So I was disappointed with that. I really wanted to, you know, like a real good scene that was just sort of like fucking triumphant, you know, because the Avengers movies, when you bring the Avengers theme in, that makes you feel like, wow, this is like, this is powerful. Didn't get it with anything in this movie. Nothing stood out at all. The music was as bland as it could have been. And I hate it when they do that with these movies. Some of the Marvel movies do it too. And it seems like it's a plague on most superhero movies where the themes are just like, it's background temp music almost. And they need to, you know, go back to when things were bigger. Give me a theme for everybody. When you had that little pop of the Wonder Woman theme, that made me happy. The old Superman theme didn't hear it at all. So... The Flash's theme is the old Angly Hulk theme, kind of, I guess, sort of. 
it all felt weird. I don't know. The music, another missed opportunity. But the biggest thing with this movie is the editing. Uh, it felt like I was missing so much, like an extra hour of breathing room. And I don't know, maybe a couple of setup films too. It was basically one scene after another with very little transitional material, almost as if they took this like true outline breakdown of the whole movie, the story that they wanted to tell. And then they pinpointed in bold, which scenes were 100% necessary. Like we need to have this scene where Steppenwolf takes the mother box from the Amazons. We need to have the scene where Cyborg searches for the mother box, so on and so forth. And then they only did those and everything else got cut. Like they left out all the glue between all those scenes. And that's disappointing because that feels like Iron Man 2. And you know what? Batman v Superman felt like Iron Man 2 where they were sort of rushing the idea of here are the elements of our universe. We really just want to skip a little bit. Go with us. We promise we'll fill in the gaps later. Eventually, Marvel did. And I can look back on Iron Man 2, and I don't hate it as much as I used to. In fact, I don't hate it. It's one of my least favorite of the movies as far as, like, on its own film, but it ended up being one of the most important. Batman v Superman, I think, is 75% perfect. The Ultimate Edition, I mean. The other 25%, like Jesse Eisenberg's Lex Luthor, horrible. And I would have changed a couple things around, you shouldn't have shot Jimmy Olsen like that. It's so stupid. But I felt more comfortable coming out of Batman v Superman than I did leaving this one. I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt when it came to Batman v Superman, thinking that it was like, all right, they are kind of rushing, but it looks like they're heading in the right direction. This just felt like a misstep. I still say if you have to go with a see it or a skip it kind of review, you should see it, but I'm disappointed. And at this point, I actually do sort of want the Flashpoint movie to reset some things. But the problem isn't so much the in-universe stuff. It's the mentality by which the team itself is working on their movies. None of them have knocked it out of the park. And they've had more than enough chances. And they have more than ac- adequate source material to pull from, too. They just seem like they can't stick the landing. Like, if they have these good ideas, then they filter it through this weird studio exec mentality or something where, I mean, why did this movie need to be two hours? Why couldn't it have been two hours and ten minutes? You don't think people would have stuck around for an extra ten minutes? And maybe that ten minutes would have made all the difference. Thankfully, they did a good enough job introducing The Flash. They did a good enough job introducing Cyborg. They did a good enough job introducing Aquaman. Batman's pretty solid. Wonder Woman's solid. Superman, you still have a little bit of hurdles over there, even though Henry Cavill is great as Superman. Uh, You've got the makings of a good Justice League. You just didn't get a great Justice League. So, yeah, I'm disappointed with the movie. Uh, I'm disappointed for a lot of reasons because this should have been and could have been really, really fantastic. And I remember leaving the Avengers and I loved it so much and I felt like it, it was worth all the build and that they really did everybody justice and that was like amazing to see the Hulk and Thor fight and that they felt like the Hulk and Thor and that the story was good enough and that I was excited to see where the future was and stuff. Now I'm looking at this and I'm like, all right, well, if you do this like damn near standalone Aquaman movie, like, I'm, yeah, I'm going to see it. Like, it'd be kind of cool, but I'm not as pumped as I was hoping that I would be. If you do this Matt Reeves Batman movie and it's a completely different Batman and stuff, then hopefully you know what you're doing. I still wanted uh, maybe to see like a little bit of references to the Bat family, maybe a little Dick Grayson thing, maybe a little thing with Barbara Gordon, you know, that that's kind of my bread and butter. But it all boils down to, was the movie good? Was it bad? Was it okay? It was okay. Could have been a lot better and it wasn't. So, yeah, I'm disappointed. And hopefully you guys had a better time. I'll still give it a hit because it still was better than Suicide Squad at the very least, that's for sure. And for that matter, 
a lot of people they boost up Wonder Woman a little bit too much. I think that people aren't as willing to criticize it as they should be. The movie's not as great as everybody says it is. It's good. It's fine. But a lot of the characters are, are lacking and stuff too. And by now we've gotten Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, and Justice League. We've gotten five movies. And I feel like we have, if you take out all the good stuff, you've got two and a half good movies. Because a lot of uh, Man of Steel is really good. And a lot of Batman v Superman and there's some good parts of Wonder Woman and there's some a uh, couple of decent parts when it comes to Suicide Squad, but no film knocks it out of the park. So that's really disappointing. In the future of the DC universe, it could be in jeopardy. I don't know. But let me know what you think. Tell me in the comments below whether you like this, you didn't like it, what things were the hits and the misses as far as you were concerned. Uh, what am I crazy about? You know, whatever. Just try to keep the uh, a little bit of tact when it comes to that if you disagree. <laughs> And the next thing that you guys are going to be hearing me uh, review is going to be The Punisher, which it's around like 1.30 in the morning when I'm recording this now, which means that at the very least, you'll be seeing it by the end of the day uh, because this is going to start in about another hour and a half. Uh, I'm going to have to start going through all that. So stay tuned to the channel for that. If you want to be aware of when that video comes out, subscribe, hit that button right there, and also check off that bell and that you want to receive notifications if you're listening to this on iTunes and Stitcher, then you can follow us on fanboysanonymous.com, of course, uh, at fanboysanonymous on Facebook, and at fanboysanon on Twitter. Those are other ways that you can be aware of when we post new things. And, uh, yeah. All right. That's it for me now, everybody. Thanks for listening to this. It's time for me to geek out. See you next time.